All right, folks, so this is where we're going to create a vacuum cleaner attachment. I ran into little hiccups with uh, the drafted filleted pad feature that's used to create this top portion here. So I'm going to deviate a little bit from the tutorial simply because, it, I don't know, either the tutorial or this particular instance of the drafted filleted pad feature seemed to be broken, so I have to do a little bit of a workaround. But at any rate, let's get started here. I'll close this out. Make a new part. This is chapter six, tutorial one. And so the first thing they ask us to do is go into the ZX plane and create a parallelogram. So I'll create that with the bottom left corner of the parallelogram coincident to the vertical absolute axis. I will then take the bottom left vertical line and make it coincident to the vertical absolute axis. We have some dimensions here we need to respect. We have a vertical measure direction between the top and bottom point of the left edge of the parallelogram, distance of 28. And then you have a diagonal measure direction, or just a measure, <laughs> measure of distance value of 68.8. Okay, perfect. This guy needs to be vertical. So I'll just take that line, right click, set the vertical, and we're good. Just double check your measurements. Exit sketcher. So now this guy needs to be padded merit extent. Total distance being the width of the entire vacuum cleaner attachment is 132. We'll just take 132, divide it by 2 with merit extent. And the next thing we need to do is create a sketch on the top face of our base feature. We're going to create a sketch that we're going to use to pocket, right? This pocket shall occur on the outside of the sketch. So I'll come here, and we need to draw a shape outlined in figure 6-89. First order of business is to draw an axis line coincident to the vertical absolute axis. There we are. And we need to start drawing some symmetrical extension lines for the top and bottom portion of the profile that describes the cut for our vacuum cleaner feature. So I'm going to select the line tool, select symmetrical extension. I'll just define a line up here. And I'll define a line on the bottom here, making sure that the center point of the lines are coincident to the vertical absolute axis. I'll do a length value of total distance of that, which is supposed to be 132. Uh, the length of this top line is irrelevant because it's actually determined by an angle value that we're going to set later. But this line does need to be coincident to the upper edge of this parallelogram that we created. So I'll come here. Go to Constraints, right-click, do Coincidence. I'll take this bottom edge and the bottom edge of the front of our parallelogram. Control select these two guys, right-click, do Coincidence on that. Okay, tidy up my measurements some. Next thing we need to do is uh, a diagonal line. It's very, very subtle, but there's a line that occurs here. Turn off my symmetrical extension. I don't need it anymore. Just a line that has to be at a certain angle. I'm going to draw the line we want to keep first, but I also need to draw a line that's a construction line. So I'll invoke my line tool, set construction mode, and I'll make sure that the start point of this line is the start point of the diagonal line we just drew. Just put it up here. Okay, make sure that's vertical. And we as want to assign an angle constraint from the construction line to this edge value of 3. It's going to be at a very specific angle, right? Then the next thing we need to do here is vertical measure direction of 10. Okay. Next thing we need to do is a diagonal line. And then another diagonal line. Notice I'm not even you know, dimensioning with the horizontal vertical to measure direction yet. It's not so important. What is important that we take these three lines and we mirror them about the axis line that we drew. Then once we've got that, we can apply a distance value between this point and this point. Distance of 65. Excuse me, 66. And then an angle value between these two edges 
of 55. A little bit of tidying up I need to do here. These points need to be coincident. Good. All right, angle value of 55, distance value of, shouldn't really cross these guys, but yeah, that's better. Distance value of 66 between these two points, distance value of 132 between the point here on the bottom edge, left to right, distance value of 10, angle value of 3 between the construction line and the line on the right here. Good, we can exit Sketcher. And now we can invoke our pocket feature. So the pocket feature is going to be a little different this time. We'll do a couple things. We're going to invoke the pocket feature. We're going to grab our sketch. Instead of pocketing the inside of it, pretty normally this is what we do in this class, right? We're going to do reverse side, and we'll get this. But we actually, if you look at the way the pulling direction of the pocket is occurring, it's, it's pocketing normal to the direction of the profile that we created our sketch. I want it to pocket straight down. So to do this, I'm going to wake up some additional profile direction options. We can actually control the direction in which our pocket occurs by hitting the more button. Okay, Making sure in this direction field here that normal to profile is selected. It's got to be turned on. Box should be orange. Under the reference element, we are going to select the XY plane because we want this thing to cut straight down, not at the direction based on the orientation of the plane we use to create our sketch. So by choosing the direction normal to profile option where it says reference it currently has no selection we want to click on that field and come here to the tree you can do this either via the tree right you got a little this blue and white dotted line preview as we roll our mouse over the planes in the tree if we move it over the XY we'll notice that if you look in the geometry area the XY plane in the geometry area is highlighted in the blue and white line that's what we want to choose we want this cut to occur going straight down. All right, so that's going to pocket that going straight down. If you hit preview, you can see that a little better. And you're going to run into that. You're going to run into the situations where you need to do a pocket and not use a direction that's based on the, the position of the plane that you created your sketch. You're going to have to change the direction of that pocket. Okay, You do that by clicking on more, clicking on the direction field, uh, clicking on normal profile and then selecting the plane you want to use for the orientation of that pocket, for the direction of that pocket. Hit OK. All right, that's pretty good. Next thing we want to do is create a sketch that's going to give us, oh, I closed out that part, that's going to give us the uh, tube shape that intersects with this base feature. So to do that, I'll create a sketch on the ZX plane. Okay. And so the details to create the sketch on the ZX plane is in figure 6-92. I'll just come over here and create a diagonal line. And what I'm going to do is do a vertical measure direction between the bottom point of that, that diagonal line and the upper end point of the bottom, the bottom right corner of this parallelogram. Right click, do a vertical measure direction, distance of 14. Make sure that this point and this edge, control, select both of them, apply a dimension, do coincidence, all right, so that, that point is coincident to that edge. Distance value of 60.5, okay, angle value from this edge to this edge here, distance of 140, and there you go. So this line, I'm just tumbling around in 3D here, we're going to create a reference plane. The plane that's going to snap to this top point and it's going to face the direction this line is oriented. We'll create a circle on that. Once we've got that circle position on that plane, it's going to extrude right into this base feature we created. So let's exit Sketcher. And we need to do some reference geometry. So here's the reference elements toolbar. You might not see it initially when you try and run it. Sometimes it's docked on this uh, tool set down here, these toolboxes. So you're going to have to undock some tools to see it but it's reference elements toolbar here it is okay if by chance you don't it doesn't pop up after doing that you can go to view toolbars and make sure you invoke reference elements either extended or compact and it should come back up so we want to invoke the plane feature and there's a bunch of different options for plane features I mean it go, it's pretty deep uh, as we go through the course I'll show you uh, different types of planes you could use based on what you're doing in this case here we want to create a plane that's normal to the direction of the curve, right? So that means we're going to 
select this option and first the curve is going to be this line and now when we do this the default position for the plane is in the mean or middle of that curve what we want this plane to do is snap up to a point so you have this little point option we want it to be positioned there and then hit OK and there you go we've essentially created our own default plane but it's not really default is it it's at a position that we established right default plane is always going to be relative to the x y y z aligned up over the origin this plane is coincident to this point here and aligned to the direction of this line here what this is going to allow us to do if I select the plane we just created and invoke sketcher on that and yeah I just wanted to sketcher on that plane and it's gone it's a little bit of a quirk in Katia what you need to do is click on fit all in and now we're properly oriented on that plane we just created there it is right and you might have to hit uh, normal view a couple of times and it happens right so you just play around with the orientation fit all in in normal view so we get this matching uh, what's in the textbook which is uh, 694 has that position right so what we want to do next has the proper orientation that we need draw a circle the diameter given is 32 we're going to control select the center point of the circle and the I'm just going to tumble around in 3d here so we can see what's going on I'm going to control select the center point of that circle and the upper end point of that line we created go here to constraint right click coincidence and then I'll go back to normal view okay there you go there's our sketch we're going to exit sketcher and what we're going to do is do a pad and a, and a fillet uh, a pad, yeah, no not a fillet so much right now we're actually going to do uh, an extrude and a draft right now there's a tool here that allows us to do this all in one hit it's called the drafted filleted pad feature what this is going to do it's going to extrude our sketch it's going to draft it so it's going to taper the sides in a little bit and if we want to it'll actually go and assign some fillets to us as well to the shape as well but we don't want this it's, in this particular lab it doesn't work proper properly so I'm going to try and invoke it and I'll show you what errors come up and then what I'll do is I'll do it manually I'll do separate uh, extrusion feature and then a separate draft feature and we'll get the same outcome but we can try it. select draft filleted pad select the sketch we just did right distance value should be 85 second limit should be this bottom place and it, straight away we get this error topological error it has to do with the draft angle I'll set the draft angle to negative 2 and set second limit to this edge here hit preview yeah so it doesn't work so I'm not even going to waste any time with that we'll do this manually with two separate features we're going to use a pad feature and then we'll use a draft feature and we'll get something that's pretty close to what's in the uh, the book so I'm first going to come here select a draft feature or excuse me a pad feature distance should be 85 and then I'm going to come here select from the dress of features toolbar select draft angle select the sides angle should be negative 2 we'll start with negative 2 the neutral element let's choose the top and hit preview and there we go yeah it's actually tapering in where that's exactly what we want hit OK and it gives us topological error let's choose the pulling direction hit preview not exactly what I want let me choose the neutral element as the bottom face and hit preview and change the pulling direction that's better uh, so I've got two elements as my neutral element let me actually clear this out clear the selection and just choose the top as my neutral element okay yeah so it doesn't let me do that uh, because of the way these shapes are intersecting with one another I mean it should what I'm going to do is change this value to a positive 2 and choose the neutral element just clear all these guys out as a bottom face all right great so let's come back here and take inventory of what I did the neutral element is the bottom face angle value is 2 and there you go okay so we'll, we'll push this through this is what we're going to use for these features here so what the draft does it actually tapers the sides 
alters the shape of our cylindrical shape. So we get this. There's a slight taper to it now. Okay? And that's like the hardest part right there. The rest of this is actually just coming here and doing the appropriate fillets. I mean, we do need to do a trim here. There's a couple of ways you could do it. In the book, they have us go here, create a sketch on this bottom face here. So on this face, we go and create a sketch. You can create any shape. I mean, in the book, they have us do a rectangle. So you can make just a big rectangle that clears the entire object. And then you can just pocket that. Change the pulling direction. Hit OK. So you get that. And now you come in here and do your fillets. Uh, the fillets are going to round off our edges here. So what we're doing is we're creating our base features, right? Creating our two solid parts that intersect with one another. We're going to alter the outside shape. And then when we're, when we're done alter altering the outside shape, we're going to alter the inside shape by removing the excess material. This is plastics modeling. So we just want a thin wall thickness object when we're done here. We don't want a solid mass. So you don't do the fillets for you don't do the shell first. You have to do the fillets first. So we'll come here, grab this edge, this edge, and these are all right out of the book. First set of fillets. You do the, the larger fillets first, typically, and then the smaller fillets. So it's 12, and then the rest of the fillets are a smaller value of three. You don't want to fill it this front face. You want to fill it all these edges. Okay, so I made a mistake. I selected the top face. I'll come here. If you ever make that mistake, you select the wrong thing, click on this little selection bag. I selected a face instead of an edge. You should only, in this instance, only ever, in this particular project, only uh, fill it edges. So I'll take that face, remove it, close this out, and continue. And fill it only edges. So you got to be really careful. One way to do this is just kind of slow down a little bit. Roll your mouse over the element you want to fill it, and it's going to identify it as an edge. If you make a mistake, right, this is a typical mistake. You kind of go a little fast here. You put your mouse over a face, and now it's going to extrude the face. So it, it, it does actually give us little indicators that we can use to identify what it is we're about to fill it, which is pretty neat. So that's edge. Yeah, so that's a edge that's part of a fillet, so I can't select that. And just make sure we've got hard edges here. That means edges that are not part of a fillet. And it looks like we're okay. The rest of these guys were going to be 3 millimeters. Type in three, and there you go. If you have uh, this front edge rounded off, it means you selected the face. You want to go back, double click on your edge fillet feature here, and just click on the selection option and look for any faces and remove them. And just go back and reselect what you need to. Okay, but we're pretty good here. So we've altered the outside shape, right? We created our two intersecting base features. We treated the edges with fillets, and now the outside of our structure is complete. Let's work on the inside. The interior part has to be shelled out. We need to be left with a, after running the shell feature, we need to have a three millimeter wall thickness indicated in the control art images of our tutorial in figure 6-87. Wall thickness is two millimeters. So to do this, we're going to invoke our shell and we want to identify the start and end of the shell feature. Well, that's going to be the top part of the vacuum cleaner attachment where we have openings and the bottom part of the vacuum cleaner attachment and give this two millimeters wall thickness and there you go now we've created some reference geometry standard practice that you want to hide those guys hide the plane and the line we created to set the orientation of our second feature you just hide that and you can if you want go and hide the default planes for this as well and this is what you would save out